Level 2, SSL VPN module. In this module, we'll discuss SSL VPN introduction, including reverse proxy mode and full tunnel mode. We'll then discuss SSL VPN for both the Windows OS family and Mac OS X. SSL VPN introduction. SSL VPN is the secure socket layer protocol, version 2.0, originated by Netscape. Version 3.0 was designed with public review and industry input. SSL uses RC4, MD5, RSA, and other encryption methods. SSL's cryptographic system uses two keys to encrypt data, a public key known to everyone and a private key, or secret key, known only to the recipient of the message. All modern web browsers support SSL, known as HTTPS on port 443, and many websites use the protocol to exchange confidential user information, such as credit card numbers or bank account info, between users and financial sites. SSL authentication provides encryption of data exchanged between two applications. Encryption makes data transferred over the network intelligible only to the intended recipients. TLS, Transport Layer Security, and its predecessor, SSL, or Secure Socket Layer, are cryptographic protocols that provide secure communications on the internet for such things as web browsing, email, internet faxing, instant messaging, and other data transfers. IETF adopted SSL and made minor changes. Therefore, while there are slight differences between SSL 3.0 and TLS 1.0, the protocol remains substantially the same. SSL provides application layer security on OSI Layer 7. It is important to realize that SSL is not strictly a web protocol. It functions at the session and transport layers of the OSI model and can establish encrypted communication tunnels for various application level protocols that may sit above it. It is possible to use SSL to effectively encrypt any application level protocol. SSL VPNs can prevent network address translation and firewall traversal issues that are associated with legacy IPsec VPNs. HTTPS is a web protocol that uses SSL for encryption that is used worldwide today for secure web communications. Today, servers typically provide regular web service on port 80 and SSL encrypted web traffic on port 443. This slide shows an example of an encrypted web page in Internet Explorer. Note the HTTPS at the start of the URL and the lock icon near the bottom right of the screenshot. HTTPS is commonly used by web applications that have stringent security demands. A typical example is with online transactions on e-commerce websites or net banking websites. SSL will secure communications between server and client. By authentication and data encryption mechanisms, the authentication mechanism will validate the user's identity. Thus, you don't have to worry about whether someone is doing online shopping under your identity. The data encryption mechanism will prevent theft of your personal data, such as name, card number, expiration date, and so forth, by a thief sniffing packets from the internet. The following benefits of SSL-based VPN are by using simple web browsers that support SSL, you can create an internet VPN without the hassle of deploying and maintaining separate IPsec VPN clients. It supports all web, email, client-to-server, and host-based computing applications without any changes. It is arguably more secure than IPsec as it doesn't tunnel data directly onto the corporate network. Instead, the tunnels are terminated at the VPN appliance and the information is proxied onto the network by that appliance. Like IPsec, SSL VPN works by tunneling the data in an encrypted envelope. This protects your data from prying eyes and makes it just about impossible to tamper with. The IPsec standard is ideal for site-to-site -site links and small remote access deployments, while an SSL VPN is perfect for large remote access requirements by end users. The Zywall USG appliance supports two modes of SSL VPN. In a reverse proxy mode, Users have access to web-based applications through the SSL VPN, including webmail, file sharing, and other web-based applications. In full tunnel mode, this type of SSL acts more like an IPsec VPN client, where non-web-based applications and protocols can be used through the tunnel. However, this requires a special software client to be downloaded and installed on the client computer when the tunnel is established. 
The most basic function of an SSL VPN is its ability to receive user requests and relay them to internal servers. This gateway type function is known as reverse proxy. A forward proxy acts as a proxy for client requests, whereas a reverse proxy acts as a proxy for web servers. The main purpose of a forward proxy is to lower server response time to save on bandwidth, but a reverse proxy protects web servers from attacks by hiding internal resources by rewriting IP addresses and URLs in web pages. This diagram illustrates the differences between reverse proxy and forward proxy. Again, you can see a forward proxy acts as a proxy for client requests, and a reverse proxy acts as a proxy for web servers. Reverse proxy is an SSL VPN mechanism designed for web applications. By employing reverse proxy, users can access any website, OWA, RDP, or VNC server located on the corporate network, with the SSL VPN appliance acting as a proxy for those servers. For full network extension mode, or full tunnel mode, clients require the Zywall USG Security Extender ActiveX or Java applet running on the SSL VPN client. The two purposes of full tunnel mode are 1. IPsec-like access for any applications. A network extension application scenario is similar to that for an IPsec VPN application. Once a remote user passes authentication, a remote client can access the corporate network and use any application a corporate network user can access normally. And 2. Policy control rules for access control. By default, the firewall will not block any traffic from a remote client running in network extension, network access mode. However, the administrator can create additional firewall policies to manage remote client access. When a client is running the security extender in SSL full tunnel mode, the security extender will create a virtual interface on the client's computer for routing SSL traffic to the Zywall USG. Once the user has authenticated, the Zywall USG will supply the user an IP pool virtual address that will allow him or her to route traffic to the VPN network specified using the Zywall USG's LAN address as a local network gateway or network extension local IP. To reiterate on the terms just introduced, the IP pool is an address object that defines a range of private IP addresses to assign to user computers so they can access the internal network through a full tunnel SSL VPN connection. The VPN network is an address object to specify which network segments users are allowed to access through a full tunnel SSL VPN connection. To elaborate more on the full tunnel SSL VPN process, the SSL VPN gateway will assign a remote PC with an IP address to the virtual interface created by the software client. Then, traffic from the remote client can be routed to the corporate network with a pre-assigned IP. It also adds necessary routes on the client machine. The admin can configure these routes from the SSL VPN policy configured on the Zywall USG. Users can also manually add routes via their computer's command line if they so desire. In reverse proxy mode, the Zywall USG is a proxy that acts on behalf of the local network servers. As the final destination, the Zywall USG appears to be the server to the remote users. This provides an added layer of protection for your internal servers. There are three network access methods in SSL VPN, web applications, file sharing, and full tunnel mode. The web application reverse proxy method supports the following access types, web server, for web servers hosting standard web pages, OWA, or Outlook Web Access, for Microsoft Outlook servers supporting OWA, RDP, or Windows Remote Desktop Protocol, which allows remote users to access RDP hosts, and VNC, or Virtual Network Computing, another remote access tool. For the latter two, the Zywall USG acts as the proxy viewer for the hosts running RDP or VNC, Therefore, no RDP or VNC client installation is necessary for SSL VPN users accessing these hosts. File sharing allows file transfer over the secure SSL VPN tunnel. We'll discuss this feature more on the next slide. Finally, there's full tunnel mode, which we've discussed in the previous slides and we'll further discuss later in this module.
File sharing is a web-based file management feature offered by SSL VPN. The mechanism running in the background is a network file sharing protocol named CIFS, or Common Internet File System. CIFS is also the network file sharing mechanism we use in Microsoft Network Neighborhood. For SSL VPN users, the CIFS interface has been webified. That is, it's been made to operate on the web using a browser, or made to function in a similar manner like a web app. SSL VPN file sharing offers you complete file management features, including browsing file folders, creating folders, deleting files or folders, renaming files or folders, uploading files, and downloading files. Example 1 shows a standard SSL reverse proxy setup. Again, reverse proxy is an SSL VPN mechanism designed for web applications. By employing reverse proxy, the users can access websites located in the corporate network. To create a user object, go to the Configuration, Object, User Group menu. You can create an account local to the Zywall USG or use an external authentication server tied to the Zywall USG. In the Configuration, Objects, SSL Applications menu, You'll need to add a new SSL application to grant SSL VPN users access to LAN assets. The name will be what SSL VPN users will see on the proxy page. The URL points to the server's host URL. The name will link to this URL on the proxy page for user access. This example shows an RDP SSL application being created. The server type is RDP and the name is the name the users will see on the proxy page. When users click on the name, the Zywall USG will create an RDP viewer window with remote computer access to the server address listed, either specified as an address object or user-defined in this application. This example shows a VNC SSL application being created. Other than the server type, the setup is identical to RDP, shown in the previous slide. This example shows a file sharing SSL application being created. The name is the name users will see on the proxy page. When users click on the name, the Zywall USG will create a CIFS session to the SSL client. In the configuration VPN SSL VPN page, you can add or edit a new policy giving you the menu seen here. From here, you can enable the policy, give it a name, and assign it a zone and optional description. More importantly, you can select your users or user groups and select to which SSL applications they have access. In this way, you can create different policies for different users or groups, granting them access to SSL applications that you desire. When users establish SSL tunnels to the Zywall USG, They'll send a web request to the incoming interface, such as a WAN interface, just like a remote administrator would. However, after typing in the appropriate username and password, they'll click the SSL VPN button instead of the login button to establish their SSL VPN session. Once successfully authenticated, users will see the SSL VPN web portal, such as the example shown here. In this portal, they'll have links that grant them access to the SSL VPN objects specified in the SSL VPN policy appropriate to them. Let's move on to the network extension full tunnel mode as displayed in this example. In example two, we have two external users using full tunnel mode to VPN back into the main office. When they establish the SSL tunnel and authenticate to the Zywall USG, their full tunnel mode client will create a virtual interface to which the Zywall USG will assign an IP from the SSL VPN pool. In this case, an IP from the 7.7.7.0 slash 24 subnet block. They'll also receive a new route to forward traffic to the Zywall's network extension local IP at 192.168.200.1. Like IPsec VPN, they have access to local network assets as determined by the network administrator. In this case, they have access to LAN 1 on 192.168.1.0 slash 24, but not LAN 2 on 192.168.2.0 slash 24. 
Firstly, you'll want to create a range or subnet object in the configuration object address menu. This object will be the DHCP table for SSL VPN users in full tunnel mode. Remember not to use a range or subnet already in use by any of the Zywa USG's interfaces. In the configuration VPN SSL VPN menu, in the global setting tab, you'll have the option to customize network extension IP and change other optional settings. When adding a new policy in the configuration VPN SSL VPN menu, in the bottom of the policy setup window, you'll see the option to enable network extension full tunnel mode. Also in the network extension section, you'll want to specify the IP pool using the address object set up in the previous steps, as well as the network list to which you wish to grant remote users access. In our previous example, we'd add the LAN1 subnet and not the LAN2 as shown in this illustration. On the SSL VPN client, you'll be able to check your network by either using command line commands like ipconfig or route print and also by the Secure Extender application that installs on clients running full tunnel mode and will run from either ActiveX or Java depending on your browser. For next gen Zywall USG models, a Secure Extender tab has been added in the configuration VPN SSL VPN menu. For previous Zywall USG models, users must upgrade their firmware versions of the USG to obtain a new version of Secure Extender if there are any updates. Now the USG checks the Secure Extender version from the cloud every 24 hours. Alternately, you can go to the Configuration, VPN, SSL VPN menu, Secure Extender tab to check the version of the Secure Extender manually. If you want to upgrade it, you can click on the Update Now button to upgrade to the new version immediately. When an SSL VPN user logs into the SSL VPN, the CQ Extender version will be updated automatically. Note that this function only applies with Windows PC versions of CQ Extender and not the Mac client discussed in the next section. SSL VPN for Mac OS 10. With either PC or Mac clients, Users must log into the SSL VPN portal to install the Secure Extender first before using Network Extension Full Tunnel Mode. Prior to 2014, Network Extension was only supported on the Windows PC platform. Now we can also run this application on Mac OS X. The Secure Extender agent is launched when the user clicks on this application icon, but not by a browser or Java launcher. For Mac OS X, a separate software client is required. There are two ways to connect to the USG's There are two ways to connect to the USG's SSL VPN tunnel. One way is via the Portal Connect, which is similar to the PC Secure Extender. The user must launch the browser and then enter the IP address of the USG to connect to SSL VPN. The other way is by manually connecting and adding an SSL VPN connection. However, Unlike the PC Secure Extender, the Mac software is not a free service. Users must purchase a license for each client from your Zyzel retailer. Users have a free trial period of 30 days. A warning message will be displayed to remind users to purchase a license. When the license is purchased, the user will be provided a serial number, which they need to insert here. How does one install this application? First. Double click on the standalone package to launch the installer. Select a destination for the installation. If you don't wish to change the destination, just click continue. The installer will advise you on the amount of disk space required for installation. Click the install button to confirm your decision and begin installation. You should now see the installation progress bar. If the installation was successful, you'll then see this screen. If you need to check the version and registration of the Secure Extender software, go to the Preferences menu. Click on About to display the version and the status of registration. To establish SSL VPN via Add Connection manually, go to the Connection screen to add or edit a connection. 
The plus symbol allows users to add a new connection manually, while the minus symbol removes a connection from the table. To add a new connection, fill in the IP address of the USG, typically a WAN IP address, and then save the configuration. Users can click the Set the Reconnection mechanism. When more than one connection is set, the Automatically Reconnect if Disconnected option will reconnect the last successful connection. To connect an SSL VPN manually, find the Secure Extender icon in the taskbar and select Connect, then select the SSL tunnel of your choice. The name of the choices corresponds with the policies you created in the Secure Extender's connection screen. When you launch the tunnel and successfully reach the Zywall USG, you'll be prompted to log in with your username and password to connect to the SSL VPN. This screen shows a successful connection. We can check the detailed information, such as the traffic graph, traffic statistics, and log. Traffic lists the total amount of data that has passed through the Secure Extender. Values are reset each time the connection is re-established. The detail log will contain important information that can be used if troubleshooting is necessary. You can also save the log to a text file for later analysis. Like PC users, we can also use the portal to connect, which is easy to use for end users, especially using a browser bookmarked to the Zywall USG's WAN IP or DNS name. Launch a browser to use a bookmark or enter the IP address of the gateway, and then enter your username and password, and then finally click on the SSL VPN button on the page. The Secure Extender should activate automatically and pass your login credentials. If login is successful, you'll see the SSL VPN portal page on the Zywall USG. In your taskbar, the Secure Extender will display four types of statuses, connected, disconnected, connecting, or suspended. For suspended, you can suspend the Secure Extender to not automatically activate if you so desire. End of module.